Thanks, Dee Dee. I think uh, this is Jesse. Oh, I'm going to jump in first. It's all right. I couldn't um, see you there. So well, somebody say said, you. somebody just messaged me that they couldn't see my video. And if nobody can, that's fine by me. I so. You popped okay. in like you said something. Okay, that's all right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Josh and I are here from District Support, and uh, we're going to go over some of the participation reminders and set up for posting stuff. And then we'll get into some uh, reports here in the half hour after that. Um, as many have talked about today, this has been a very um, unprecedented time this year. And um, one of the big pivots that have had to be made this year is from attendance to this um participation setup and tracking participation. And um, we'd like to give you know, kudos to everybody out there, attendance clerks, DPPs, everybody. Um, this has been a huge change in your life, a huge change. Um, and uh, thank you for, for sticking with us because we are learning it at the same time you are. Um, and we really appreciate all you all have done. So um, what we want to do is go over some things. A lot of this may... Um, a lot of people may say, yeah, I knew this. We're hoping that we can go over some things um, to catch um, some issues. There are a lot of things that if you change just one little thing, it could throw some stuff off. So we're hoping to get some reminders out there to catch people before they click something they shouldn't click to make, you know, something post for kiddos that shouldn't be posting or to have to do some cleanup. So um, I'm going to pass it off to Josh here and he's going to go over some general uh, setup. And then um, I'm sure we'll have some questions that we'll get through at the end. Um, and you know, before we go through this, at any point in time, if you have something that is bigger than, you know, a bigger situation than we're talking about here, or there are very specific scenarios going on right now, um, always please shoot us an email, um, shoot it to Josh or me. My, my email is actually jessica.carlton, but um, we'll be more than happy to sit down with um, any group, um, attendance clerks, DPPs, whoever, to kind of work through, because I know you guys are doing lots of very innovative things to um, educate your kids in the best way possible. So, um, Josh, I'm going to hush and let you take it now. <laughs> All right. Uh, good afternoon. Just like Jesse said, my name is Josh Whitlow, and I'm with the Office of uh, Finance and Operation in the Division of District Support. Um, today's agenda, just on the first half that we're going through, we're going to be covering uh, participation setup. So creating new blended learning groups, assign student blended learning groups, and assign blended groups to your calendar and then enable virtual attendance and then making sure you're turned on for your virtual attendance posting. So setting or creating your blended learning groups, your, your path is going to be under scheduling, blended learning, and then new blended learning groups. So just a couple of reminders, districts can either set up an automatic or manual, but it, probably at this time every student has been put in some kind of a blended learning groups, so now your automatic blended learning groups would not work if you're wanting to set up new ones. I know we've had some calls on that, and we've worked with Infinite Campus, and they've told us that if any student has already been in a blended learning group, they're going to switch those to a manual. Um, <clears throat> also, if districts have already created your blended learning groups, there's no need to create more unless you're just adding some new additional blended learning groups. I know I've talked with districts this morning and this week. Um, they're switching from in-person to now they're going to like an AB rotation uh, blended learning group. So half the students are coming in on A day and then half of them are coming in on B day. So that's we've had to set up some of that uh, info with them. So creating your blended learning groups, you're just going to after you the next part you'll click on you will uh, sorry <coughs> start date for a blended learning group must be the future day and then of course your end date will be 6 30 of 21. and the path to this is um the same spot same spot campus has already has updated functionality that allows uh users to backdate blended learning groups but this can only be done one week at a time this was done, I think, last two uh, updates, and that path would be scheduling, blended learning groups, and then manage blended learning. Participation setup, and when you're assigning your stu students to blended learning, on this screen is where you will add your students to the groups. Students on the left, after you filter down through however you want to do it, some districts are going by um, student level or grade level, and then 
they also have some that are doing ad hoc. So you can actually enter an ad hoc here and you can drill down as far as you need to go there. But if you're gonna add all your students to this blended learning group, you will just click the, the double arrow and that will move all those students over at the same time. Assign hey, blended Josh, learning. Yes, go ahead. Can I? Can you pop back one? I want to jump in real quick. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I will say, you know, you were talking about um, creating blended learning groups for everybody, and they don't have to create new ones. They can move those kiddos around. Um, yes. Just remember that if if you have gone in and created all new groups, um, it was a little bit extra work for you, but um, it's okay. Don't think that you've done anything wrong. Um, I don't know about you, Josh, but I've taken a couple of calls like that that said, well, you know, we wanted all new groups and we moved everybody. Have we done something wrong? Right. Um, you haven't necessarily done anything wrong. Um, it may have been, you know, you may have had such drastic changes that you wanted to change everybody, um, which is just fine. Just make sure you watch those dates when they start um, and stop and, you know, just make sure you know there's another way that you can just move kids in and out of groups and you don't have to create all new groups. But if you have, it's good. Right. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> So assigning your blended learning group to the calendar. Um, this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, I've worked with a lot of districts actually this week with everyone coming back into um, in-person uh, classes. So for this path, of course, it's going to be system administration, calendar, calendar, and then on your days tab. Under blended learning group at the bottom, any group that is listed here is where your teachers will be tracking participation. So if you have an A day, so say, for example, you have an AB rotation, A day is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is all NTI, and Thursday, Friday is your B day. So on Monday, you will have your all virtual students and 100% remote. This district had uh, two virtual classes going on. And here, if it's a Monday, you're going to put in the group B. This is backwards of what is actually going on. So group A is in person. So th say this is a Thursday setting. So group A will be on Tuesday and Monday and Tuesday. And so your teachers will be taking in seat attendance. And so they should not be listed here. Right, so the easiest way for me to remember this is that whoever um, you want to take participation on, you know, participation equals this student is not in front of me. They are remote at home. If I need to mark participation for this student, the group that that student is in needs to be on that day. Yes. So this is a screenshot for adding your non-traditional instruction days. So here, so the, just like on that Wednesday, if all your kiddos are at home learning on Wednesday, that is an NTI day. So you're going to make sure that your school day, instruction, and attendance, all three are checked during any NTI day from here on out. Um, then your day event, of course, will be in, not instructional. And then this is where you're going to list all your blended learning groups that you have in your district. And this is to make sure that all students are at home learning and your teachers can track participation and not attendance. Hey, Josh, can we go back to that one and talk a little bit, just a second, Absolutely. about um, those targeted learning groups? Yes, I had that on my notes. And I skipped over. I'm sorry. That's OK. I was going to say, I think we can fit it in here. We have had uh, quite a few questions about those targeted learning groups. Um, there is some guidance out there if you do have some kids who are being brought in. Uh, I believe, um, Josh will have to correct me on this, I believe it's um, less than 14 students per teacher and less yes. than 15% 15 of your school? Yes. Okay, so um, there's some documentation out, that, uh, out there about the targeted um, assistance groups. Um, if you have what would otherwise be considered an NTI day, but you still have students in on these targeted, in these targeted groups, that is still an NTI day. Don't think just because you have those small targeted groups that it's not an NTI day. Um, we're, we're having to run them a little bit different 
normally, you know, everyone, you know, everyone in the district, the rule is everyone in the district is at home. That's an NTI day. And that's still the case this year. Um, but those targeted groups are allowed to come in and still let that be um, classified as an NTI day in your system. So participation set up enable virtual attendance. So the path for this is going to be system admin, attendance, and then virtual attendance preferences. And it's just a reminder that this must be turned on for teachers to have the ability to mark any participation. And so again, that's a, a huge stress to everyone that this must be turned on at all times. Um, as far as the screenshot, you can see um, it's up to the district on how you want to handle um, if you want the students to check in themselves or allow the parents to check in their students, especially at the lower level. Um, it's up to the district again on how you want to, if you want them to have a certain time to log in, or if you want them to actually log in to every single period, class period that they have. And then um, again, it's up to the district on how many days you want the teachers to go back down here at the bottom of the screen where it says, I think it's got 50 days. Again, that's up to the district. At first, when we first started, we said 10 days. That was just what we were recommending, but we found out very fast that that needs to be opened up much more. And Jess, do you have anything on that? Yeah, I was just going to add that, um, you know, these can be changed from school to school. So um, on your calendars. So if, you know, you have one school that the teachers are really on it and they're getting that participation in, um, really quick, your days may only be open for, you know, <clears throat> that 10 to 15 days. And then you may have another school where you have, you know, the teachers that because of, you know, because of all kinds of different reasons, they need some more time to get, you know, that participation in. So don't think that you have to set this for the exact same day for all of your schools, for all of your calendars. Um, and also don't think that you have to kind of set it and then not touch it again. It's perfectly okay if you say, you know, oh, we're going to try to get this in by 20 days. And then, you know, life happens, things happen. You know, it's, it's so crazy this year. Um, something may happen, something may have gotten missed and a teacher may come to you and say, yeah, I need that open back up. So that is your all's decision. Um, you can go in there and, and make that update um, whenever you need to. Okay. Uh, again, this is the virtual attendance posting and the same uh, path, system admin, attendance, virtual attendance preferences. This is at the bottom where it says virtual attendance posting. This is where um, the district has the ability to decide if you want to run it daily or weekly. And then and this is where it, where it goes in as once the script runs, it has the NCVP code to run. Um, we have talked with Infinite Campus a um, little on this and we did have everyone have it set at 11.59. And now that we recommend everyone set this at 1130 because it takes, especially at your bigger district, it takes a little longer for that to script to run. And so it wasn't catching everyone. And then we had districts calling us saying, hey, they've already posted NCVP code and school's not even started yet. So that's where we were running into and they told us to back that up to at least 1130. Uh, Jess, do you have anything on this? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on this one because this one's a biggie. Um, this is where um, a lot of times any of our issues kind of come from, is making sure everybody understands exactly what's going on on the bottom part of the screen. It's a it's a, just a little bitty checkbox with, you know, only five entries there, but, but they make big, big changes to the entire system. So um, another change that we have made is at the beginning when we started this, we recommended that attendance posting start date run back to the first day of school. Um, and you can still have that happening if you want. Um, but if you have made any type of changes to your setup over the winter break um, and you had everything kind of right for the first semester and your participation was looking good, um, that attendance posting start date, what that does is that tells the, um, every time it runs at night or in the week, it, that's the date that it tells the system to go back and look for participation from the teacher to go back to that date. So if you had everything right for the previous semester and kind of have the teachers are out of it and they're kind of, you know, locked down and they're starting from, you know, January 1 going forward, you may want to think about moving that date to 1-1-21 so that you're not, you know, 
changing anything that is is in the back. Um, I will also say an, another little tip. If you make an, a change to this, whether you need to um, make a uh, change to the frequency or the time, if you haven't updated that yet, when you go in here, it will want you to update that um, posting job start date to kind of catch it and save it. So um, this this section right here is what takes all of that participation that your teachers have been marking and writes that back to the um, students attendance tab. So, you know, if you have a teacher that, you know, didn't get to mark um, his or her class today, it may post everybody, if you're doing this daily, it may post, post everybody for that class as NCVP for that day. It'll show up and then the teacher goes in, marks them as participating. It'll catch it the next day um, if you do another daily post the next day. So um, just a couple of things here. want to, you know, make sure if, if you're having some trouble not being able to figure out where NCVP codes are coming from, you know, it, it may be this area, the posting start date that you want to start looking at to make sure um, questions are here. And like I said, um, any, any of this you all want us to look at, just shoot us an email and we'll look at your specific case. All right. And here's just some important points to remember. Uh, we still have questions coming in about uh, students on QCE and QCP. Um, quarantine students do not have to be marked absent. Um, since everyone is going back into uh, session in person school, um, just a reminder that if you have a student that is either QCE due to you know, exposure or a positive case, you will just move them from um, the in person group to the virtual group. Um, there's all kinds of ways you can do that. Um, but that's how you, however you want your district to do that. Um, just a reminder, Infinite Campus will not wipe any attendance data upon individual district requests. Um, they have stopped doing that. And, um, and if you have any troubles with that area, you need to contact myself or Jesse and we can work with you on that. And then if we need to bring in Infinite Campus, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, districts can edit blended learning groups in the past, but this should be done with great caution. Once a blended learning group is added to the date in the past, it cannot be removed. So um, just say you forgot to add a blended learning group to yesterday. If you were in school yesterday and you forgot to add group A to the system and teachers saying, hey, we cannot take participation. They're all on in-seat attendance. So you can actually go back and um, add that to the group, your blended learning group under calendar, calendar, system admin, calendar, calendar, and your days tab. And just a reminder too, at the bottom, um, we will be conducting conducting participation reviews after the new year. So um, we are after the new year, but uh, we'll start doing that. And just a reminder, these are the four areas that you can count as participation. So your one-on-one, -on -one, your group videos, student logged in and learning LMS, learning management system, or they submitted a paper packet to you at a later date, but it was for the week prior. You can still count that as for your um, participation. And Josh, I'm gonna jump in on those participation reviews real quick, if that's okay. okay. Yes. Um, I know everyone in the attendance world is used to hearing um, attendance audits. We do not want you to confuse these participation reviews with attendance audits. They are in no way, shape, or form the same thing. Um, audits, um, we weren't able to do those this year because, you know, there was no uh, ADA real attendance. Um, so what we are going to do is we have, um, we're kind of getting together at KDE to figure out uh, a grouping of districts that we want to reach out to to just try to get a better picture of how you manage this. Um, we're just gonna be asking some, some general questions about you know, um, maybe some example dates um, to try to get some data because we're being asked you know, questions such as, you, know, you have these four methods here, how many people are doing the one-on-one -on -one video communications? Or how many people are doing the LMS? Um, how many people are still using paper packets? And you know, we really have no way to um, track that right now um, in campus and you know, to be honest, we didn't want to make you try to track that because that, that would be a lot of information to track. But we do believe, you know, teachers have been tracking this and they know their kiddos and they know how um, they've been interacting with them. So we're going to um, 
do some what we're calling participation reviews just to reach out via our field staff, uh, Sheila, Ruth, and Scott, which you all are all very, very familiar with. Um, and some other people here at KDA are going to re- reach out to just ask some, you know, general questions to kind of kind of see, see um, how um, how this has been going and and what method has kind of worked best for you all. So um, don't want that to give anybody any uh, heartburn or anxiety because it's um, it's something that'll not be uh, near as uh, involved as, as audits. So don't think it's an audit. Yes. It's not. Yep. And I think, Didi, that's the last part of that um, presentation before we go into others. So do you have any questions for us? I think I have them up. Didi, you want me to try and run through them? Uh, I can do it or you can do it either way, Jesse. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of the questions is, All uh, should all of our days in the calendar be marked NTI? You want me to take that one, Josh? You shouldn't be have, you shouldn't have everything marked NTI unless every single day everyone is virtual. There are times, you know, there there have been times that everybody has been virtual in different districts. You know, either you know your rates rise and everybody has gone home, you know, for the for a week or whatnot. Yes, all of those days, but not necessarily. We can't blanket say yes, all of your days are NTI days. Because if you have an in-person group coming in, whether it's, you know, a 50% group, an AB rotation, or you just have a group of in-person kiddos coming in, that's not an NTI day because you have a group of kids in. The only time it is an NTI day and there are kids in the building is if the, the, those very small targeted groups, very, you know, less than 15% right. in there. Jesse, you can keep going if you want. I don't have to read them to you if you're oh, looking okay. at <laughs> You might want to read them to everybody else. But. Yes. Well, I, I pull them up because it's easier for me to read. I don't do very well listening. Sorry. Um, okay. So um, along with that, it says, if we were all virtual on Wednesday, should we have a day event with NTI? Um, and the answer to that is yes. If everyone is virtual on Wednesday and Wednesday is your one day um, that everybody, you know, you have a rotation and everybody is not there, that Wednesday should have an NTI day event on it. Okay, so um, we're talking about targeted learning groups here. And this person says, I marked the kids in the building with attendance AC alternative class. Do I need to back those attendance codes out? So I'm thinking what they are asking is they have marked their targeted learning group students with an attendance code of AC alternative class. Um, Josh, are you familiar with using, I think that's a, probably a district specific code and we may need to talk to this district. I was going to say, we need to talk to them to make sure that they have set that up correctly, just because okay. we don't want them to go against their attendance, which I know attendance is not being calculated, but still on their profile. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Whoever that is, if you would reach out to, to Josh and myself, we'll, um, we'll take a look at that one because that one's going to be a little bit more specific to your district. Okay. So we had two in-person we had two groups that were in-person and virtual. Now we are going Monday, Wednesday, Group A, Tuesday, Thursday, Group B. Do I need to have the in-person group and end date? I would think that their in-person group end date would just be 630. Is that correct, Josh? That is correct. Okay. If you don't have, um, if you've had your in-person group the whole time and, you know, people have moved in and out of it, it's okay that, you know, it has, you know, it makes sense to me that you could have an in-person group that would span the whole year mm-hmm. because you have a group of kids that had planned whenever they could to be there the whole year. All right. Yes. Mm. All right. So QCE and QCP will be learning slash attendance groups and not attendance codes. Um, is this correct. is Yes. And this is one that we've had quite a few questions on. Some districts have set up attendance codes to mirror that QCE and QCP. If you did that, that is fine. If that's your district decision and and you're using those, that is fine. Um, One of the reasons we didn't, you know, send those out to everyone was because we had a lot of people with very different opinions on that. Um, Some people didn't want those codes to be seen on attendance reports or anything else because they felt it was, you know, um, violating privacy of being, you know, identifying people that had been exposed or positive or whatnot. So um, 
we needed a way to track um, how many kids had been exposed and or positive. So we were using those attendance groups. So that's your choice of what code you want to use there. Um, okay, we have one more, Josh. Regarding all virtual on Wednesdays with A days on Monday, Tuesday, and B days on Thursday, Friday, do Wednesdays have to be marked as NTI? If so, do we have to update the school participation plan tab from hybrid to 100% remote and back for every Wednesday? I, you mean to take that one? You can, go for it. Okay, so yes, the Wednesday will be marked as an NTI day. And also on the school participation plan tab, we have talked to David Cook and Wendy Newton on this, and she said, no, if you're just doing it for one day, you know, in the middle of the week or the end of the week or the end of the week, she said, you do not have to change that. That is just going to be if you're out for, I think she said a week at a time is when she wants that to be changed. Right. We don't want you all having to, you know, mess with that, you know, absolutely every week, you know, hitting it, you know, there's, there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things to change and do. So, um, no, it, that's still kind of, Technically, that is your hybrid plan. In your hybrid plan, that one day you are off. So um, don't feel the need that you have to switch that, you know, every time that Wednesday or that Friday or whenever it is comes. So, um, okay. Oh, okay. Somebody has asked for email addresses and phone numbers for Josh and I. Um, if you hold on just a second, oh, we'll put it in, in the there. chat. I oh, <laughs> I've got it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and they'll be at the end of the PowerPoint here. So um, I think we're a couple, three minutes early, Dee, Dee Not too bad. No, I had one question for you, though, Jesse, just to make sure okay. it, it's clear. Back to the question about the attendance group. <laughs> <laughs> if they decide to use that as an attendance code, they still have to complete the attendance groups, too, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. I, I want to make sure that was clear to everybody because... When, when when you said it was up to the folks, I, I was making sure I thought it meant it was only up to them whether they use the codes. Correct. But the groups themselves are to yes. be used by everybody. Okay. I just want to make sure I was correct on that. You are. The groups are the only way we have standard throughout the state to pull a number of those kids. You know, so those groups are the only way we have that's standardized that we can say X number of kids have been out because they were positive or X number of kids have been out because they were exposed. 